everybody, welcome back. This is part 4 of my Step to Smooth Animation tutorial. In the first three parts, we talked about some of the key elements of working in Step Animation. And now we're finally ready to go into the actual smoothing process. But before we go into the step-by-step -step explanation, I need to get out of the way one of the most confusing aspects of the smoothing process. And that is the inherent time cheat that we use without realizing it when we work in step animation. To make it as easy as possible to understand, let's start with something really simple. Let me play the animation for you. And as you can see, the ball anticipates back and then it slows down. This is what we want to get to. And the step version of the same thing would be this one. The entire animation is made out of a single curve that you can see here. And this is the smooth version of the same curve. So basically what we want to do is simply to get the red curve to look something like the dotted blue curve. Notice how what the red curve does is a pretty close approximation of what the smooth blue curve does. And that's why when I play the animation it's going to be also something pretty similar. And as you can see the gray ball is also anticipating backwards and then it seems to be slowing down in the end. Notice also that the values of the keys on both curves are exactly the same. That means that the smooth ball is going through exactly the same moments as the step ball. And that also matches what we want to achieve which is to take our stepped animation and without changing the poses that we already designed very carefully we would just want to go through them in a smooth way. But notice that what is really changing the keys between the two curves is where they're positioned in the timeline. For example, the anticipation key in the stepped version is on frame 12. But in the smooth version, the same key is on uh, frame 17. And I think that just by looking at the way these two curves look, I think you can really understand why that has to be like that. Because if I take this anticipation key and I put it where I know it's going to end up in the end when it's smooth, well then my step version is not going to work because it's not a good approximation anymore of what the blue curve does. But I think you can see how this means that if I now take the red curve and I simply smooth it like that, I get something very far from what I wanted. I get something very different from the animation I approximated in my step animation. And that is because my timing is all wrong. The keys are situated in the wrong place. To fix it, all I have to do is play around with my keys, with the timing of my keys, not with the values, because the values are great. Remember that these, are, these keys represent poses that we've designed deliberately to look good. So we don't want to change the actual values, but we do want to change the timing in such a way that it goes back to what it should have been. Sort of counteract this timing cheat we were talking about. And now the animation works. And by the way, I didn't have to do it in the graph editor. The only reason I did it in the graph editor is uh, because I wanted you to, sh to see how the blue curve and the red curve match up in the end. But uh, I could have done it in the timeline, and usually I would do it in the timeline, because usually it's not just one curve, but a whole lot of curves. And it's just much easier to work in the timeline. You don't even have to open the graph editor up to this point. So let's go back now to the Muppet guy that we used to from the other tutorials. Uh, this is not the same animation we had before. We're going to go back to the animation we did before and finish it off. But this one is a much more simple thing. You'll notice that we have this little guy here that we're going, going to use to um, compare between the two. This is just for this tutorial. We don't usually do anything like that in animation. It's just to show you what we're doing. As you can see, when I play the animation, they play exactly the same thing. And now I'm going to select the entire big character and I'm going to smooth it. And what 
we can see is that again exactly like we had with the bowls before the timing doesn't really match what we wanted to achieve we already know what we need to do we need to move the keys around push them around a little bit to their right timing on the timeline so I'm just moving these around And now when I play the animation, it's going to do something much more appropriate. And you can compare it with the little guy to see that really this is what we were after. Now this may not be the most beautiful animation ever. And it's also sort of simplistic way of showing it. And in the coming few tutorials we're going to go uh, to back to the old animation with, that we did uh, in the previous tutorials and we're going to smooth that and that's going to be a much more real situation and we're going to make a nice animation out of this but I hope this little lab experiment of the smoothing process was helpful to you in understanding uh, the principles of why it is that the timing has to be changed between stepped and smooth because we're going to do quite a lot of that in the coming tutorials so I uh, hope you enjoyed it and next time we're going to start smoothing our, um, our animation from the last tutorials. And good luck to us and uh, see you next time. Bye bye.